Right back to the story. According to our next guest, the estate tax is not only immoral, but the Bible is flat out against it. Rabbi Shmuley Boteach is here. Rabbi, always a pleasure. Welcome back, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to quote Numbers, uh, chapters 26, 27. I know. I learn so much about the Bible when I come on your show. Excellent, <laughs> sir. Uh, I bring to your attention the tribal leader, uh, Zilaf Hahad. Have I got it right? Uh, it's Zilafchad, but uh, Zilaf you got it. Okay, do it again. Zilafchad. You've got to have something stuck in your throat while you say it. He was a tribal leader. Yes. His daughters wanted to inherit all of his assets, all of his estate, as opposed to some more distant relatives. God said to Moses, yes, the daughters should inherit the entire estate. Is that the biblical reference that you apply saying the estate tax is immoral? Well, that and many others. There, of course, the, the, the objective was to show that even women would inherit their parents fully. But let's face it, the idea of taxing someone for dying is kind of bizarre. I mean, if you were to ask most of the people who died, they would probably say they didn't have a lot of choice in the matter. Um, luckily, I'm from the state of New Jersey where this is not an issue because they take everything away from you while you're alive. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, but, but I find it astonishing that you can be taxed so much while living and then have to lose about half of your estate. And then when we discuss these even greater moral questions, like kids sort of praying that their parents are going to pop off this year before the 31st of December, before the estate tax comes back, leading people to actually uh, pray for the demise of their parents, this is positively absurd, and it is deeply immoral. It's immoral. That's the point. Deeply immoral. You're on this program to offer spiritual and morality counseling to us on the subject of money. Let me just raise this issue. I, I want to tell you what Barney Frank said. Now, this was back on December 17th, but here's exactly what Congressman Frank said. Heirs, they haven't done this on their own. They haven't worked hard. That's a pure gift to someone who is lucky enough to be related to someone or very friendly with someone who made the money. Your reaction, Robert? That was absurd because a child is bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. To say that they are suddenly a stranger and they have no entitlement to the money that you made as a parent is crazy. I mean, I support my children now, my small children. And I would like to know that if I worked hard, that it is transmitted to them and they could do good things with it. We're not saying that you should spoil children and just give them things and they don't have to work for it. We're talking about giving them a sense of morality and ethics while you are alive so that they can maybe be charitable with the money, but the government should not decide. Trace. But there's a notion, too. I mean, what about the idea that there's a family business and the kids are actually working in it. They very well could earn this money as well as their parents who maybe started the business. But this brings us then to the notion of socialism. Where does morality fall in socialism? Well, you know, I'm a great believer that, the great, that our principal human need is not food, clothing, and shelter. It's actually human dignity. We all want to feel, have, lead a dignified existence. And dignity is absolutely and intimately tied to the idea of independence. When you are dependent on someone else for your daily bread, you live a life bereft of dignity. So the issue of socialism, where you are taken care of by someone else, yes, you're not going to starve, but you're not going to have that dignified existence. Most of our lives is an attempt to prove our individuality, to, to, to establish our uniqueness. Now, you're not unique when you can't just put food on your own table. That's why religion always insists on independence. On financial independence. It is all about dignity. Mm. Um, <laughs> there you go. My is uh, on the cup that he's drinking. This is the Barney uh, Chris mug here. When I need more airtime, I just uh, drink from this, and Stuart gives it to me. Uh, Barney Frank saying that about the heirs having done nothing to earn that money, you, it would be the same thing as me saying, look, the long term unemployed are lazy. That's why they don't have jobs. It's generalizing, it's having a central tendency. And, and to Tracy's point, how does he know what every single heir has done, and why do you lump all these people into one group and then punish all these people? Well, you know, it's that, it's that concept of OPM, other people's money. Uh, I think if anyone has no right to talk about people who have not earned something, it's politicians who have not earned our money and yet spend it so willfully. Let's face it, this country is bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I mean, the municipalities, we haven't even begun to calculate what the states owe and what the cities owe. Once that comes together, the federal government may have to do another massive bailout, which we just don't have. And the reason is we're spending other people's money. If someone earns something and you give it to their kids, you hopefully give them a sense of responsibility. And they're the ones who should determine how the money should be yeah, spent. But this is a huge pot of gold for people who believe in the liberal side of politics, yes. they don't want to give up that much free cash. I mean, isn't that what this whole argument is about? Right. You know, well, it's hard to understand why our political figures are so intent on spending our money. I don't even, it, it, you know, you have to really get into the psychology of it. What I do know is that a person has a right to 
retain that which belongs to them. And to suddenly divide families and to say that this child has not earned it, I find positively astonishing. I mean, I, I'm in the business of keeping families together. Families are a cohesive, indivisible unit. They are a nuclear unit. And to divide them even financially is just simply wrong. But it's almost more about the, uh, the limits, right? Just because I have $5 million, all of a sudden, I'm wealthy enough to give it back. Who's, that's the part I think that sickens most people the most, that you're determining what, what wealthy is. Right, well look, I mean, look, besides that, look at uh, here in, the, here in uh, the city of New York, we can go to so many beautiful municipal gifts that the citizens of the city enjoy because very wealthy families transmitted it to children who made great benefactions, like the Rockefeller family. Mm -hmm. um, and if you suddenly have the government in the mix, I don't think you're going to have those things. Again, we are not saying that kids should not work and they should just live off the sweat of their parents. We're saying that you can give your children morals and values about what to do with, if it's a very large sum of money, which is still charitable and still beneficent to others. But I find the idea of the government suddenly, when someone dies, to punish someone for dying, I mean, it, you didn't do anything immoral when you died. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Shmuley Batech, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks as always, Thank Rabbi. Thank you very much for having so me.